Hey everyone! In this video, I will be demonstrating several different ways of making a crochet cord. Now, these can be used for a purse or a bag strap, for a belt, for a drawstring, anything where you need a strong sort of rope or cord in your work. And I'm going to be showing you these four different ways so you can understand how putting your hook into different parts of the stitch can really create a different look. Um, each of these has different pros and cons and different um, principles and properties to them. So I wanted to show all of them to you because I think when you understand the mechanics and sort of the engineering behind each one, it'll make it actually easier to work the stitches because sometimes it can be a little bit confusing about where to put your hook into the stitch. So we're going to also be talking about um, the anatomy of a crochet stitch and sort of all the ins and outs um, of working these cords so you can get a really comprehensive understanding of how they're made. Now before we get started actually making the different cords, I wanted to explain sort of the anatomy of a single crochet stitch. The single crochet is what we're going to be using to create each of those cords, but we're going to be inserting our hook into different parts of the stitches to create the different kinds of cords. So I think it's really important to understand the anatomy of the stitch and sort of the mechanics and the engineering, where you're going to be placing your hook and how that affects the stitch itself, as well as all the different motions when you're creating a single crochet stitch, which loops each of those motions is going to create. So to demonstrate, I just have this flat piece of single crochet, just one row here of six stitches. Uh, we're actually going to be working in the round, but I think it's a little bit easier to see the different parts of the stitch when you just have a flat swatch like this. So if you're familiar with single crochet, you'll know that most patterns will not indicate where to put your hook. They're just going to tell you to single crochet. And what that means is you're going to be inserting your hook under both legs of the tops of the stitch. All of these little V's are the tops of the stitches of this row. Some patterns may indicate to work into the front loop only, which is obvious, just working into the front loop only. Some will tell you to work into the back loop only which again, pretty obvious, it's the back loop only. Now, when you're creating a single crochet fabric, if you work under both stitches, that's giving you a nice strong foundation. It's hard to kind of stretch that out. So you're gonna have a nice structured piece. But if you're working into the front loop or the back loop only, because you're only going under that one loop, you can actually pull that and stretch it so much. So when you're working into the front or the back loop only of the fabric, it's gonna give you a nice ribbed look, but it's also gonna be much stretchier than if you were to work under both legs of the stitch. In addition to these tops of the stitches, these little Vs, if you tilt your work forward, you will see there are also these little bumps here along the back of the work which I will refer to as the third bar or the third loop. Uh, this is where we're gonna be working for one of the crochet cords. Um, we're gonna be working under that loop. Uh, for one of them, we're gonna be working under both legs at the top. For one of them, we're gonna be working into the back loop only. And for one, we're gonna be working into a loop that actually connects each stitch from one to the next when you're working in the round. Um, in addition to the tops, of the stitches here. You also have the legs of the stitch, which are these vertical parallel lines here. You can see those from the front of the stitch, front of the work as well, these vertical parallel lines. Those are the legs of the stitch. So to review, we have the legs, we have the top Vs, uh, we have that third bar, and we have more legs in the back. So as you're working a single crochet row, I'd like to explain which motion creates which parts of the stitch. So we're going to chain one to begin our, fin our next row and turn it over here. So we're looking at the back of the work. And uh, if you look at the back of the work, if you're familiar with knitting, that third bar almost looks like little pearl bumps along the back of the work. So first, we are going to be working this first stitch here. Now, this loop that is currently on the hook is going to become the top of this stitch that we're about to make. As we insert our hook under both legs of this stitch and we draw up a loop, this 
loop that we're about to pull through is going to become both the legs of this stitch as well as that third bar, third loop on the back of the work. So as we draw this through, you'll see that there are two little legs that are formed as we draw that up. So those are gonna become the legs of the stitch and the back of it, this loop part, is going to become that third bar, third loop of this stitch. As I yarn over again and I draw this loop through these two, this will become the only loop remaining on my hook which will form the top of the following stitch. So as I draw this through, you can see the legs being formed with this middle loop, as well as on the back of the work, that forming that third loop on the back. And as I said, the loop that was the only one on my hook when I began that stitch became the top V's of that stitch. So now the same thing is true for the following stitch and everyone after. The loop that's on the hook will become the top of this next stitch. As I insert my hook and I draw through this loop, this is becoming both the legs of this stitch as well as the third loop on the back of the work. As I yarn over and draw this through, this will become the only remaining loop on my hook, which will form the top of the next stitch. Again, as you can see on the back of the work, that third little loop is created by that middle yarn over as we first draw it through that stitch. So I'm just gonna work across the rest of this row. When you're working in rows, the front and the back of the fabric is the same. You're gonna have some rows where the front of the work is facing you, and then as you turn and you work across the other side, the back of the work will be facing you. Either way, it's kind of like garter stitch and knitting where you're gonna have one wrong side row followed by one right side row and so on. So you'll see all the parts of the stitch from the front or the back of the work. When you're working in the round, you generally will only have either the front of the work facing you the whole time or the back of the work facing you the whole time. So the stitches are gonna look a little bit different as we get started with our cords, but I just wanted to show you all the different parts of the stitch so you'll have a little bit better understanding of how I'm explaining where to insert your hook for these cords. And now that we have a better understanding of the different parts of the stitch, I can explain a little bit more about the differences between these cords. So this first cord here is what I would consider maybe the most obvious. This cord is worked in the round. By the way, each of these has six stitches, but you'll notice how different they look, even though they have the same number of stitches. So this first cord is worked in the spiral rounds with the front of the work facing you going under both legs of the stitch. So a very typical single crochet spiral round. You're just going around and around and around with single crochets working into the stitch totally normally. Now, because you are working into the full stitch, this is, it's a little bit stretchy. You'll notice that there's um, some space, the legs of the stitch, which are these all the way around in this round. Uh, those legs get pretty stretched out when you're making this cord. I'd say this is a little bit stronger than some cords, but you're still going to have some stretch with it. Um, and it's kind of like forming a tube, each of these. So you're going to have, a, it's a little bit squishy. There's some air inside there. Um, but this is kind of the most standard. And what if someone told me to make a single crochet cord, I'd probably think that this is how you do it. Now, this cord was made very similarly, except the wrong side of the work is facing you and you're working into the back loop of the stitch only. So it's the same motion. You're going around and around and around in unjoined spiral single crochet rounds, but you're working into the back of the stitch and you've got the, the back of the work facing out. So this is stretchier because as I said before, when you're working only under the front or the back loop of the stitch, you don't have as much, you're not grabbing as much structure of the fabric as you're crocheting. You're only grabbing that one little loop, which is right at the top. So it's gonna be quite, quite stretchy. This cord, which happens to be my favorite, is worked in the round really similarly to the way this one is with the back of the work facing you going in unjoined spiral rounds only instead of working into the top of the stitch or either of the front, uh, front or back uh, legs, loops of the stitch, you're gonna be working into that third bar or that third loop that I showed you 
with the little flat swatch. And what that does is that loop is actually extremely, extremely small and tight. These little guys are very tight and they're real small. And it's kind of hard to get your crochet hook in there, to be honest. So um, you kind of want to work this one a little bit loosely to begin with so that you can easily access those little loops. But because you're working into those tight, small little third loops, it creates this really, really structured cord that's not as stretchy at all as the other ones. And I just think it looks really consistent and really nice. Finally, we have this spiral cord which you'll notice is much fatter than these other three. And it also has a lot more air inside. It's much more kind of tubular um, than the others. And it does have some stretch to it as well, but you'll see that there's a spiral formed along here that you don't really get with these others. And this one is worked by not inserting your hook into the stitch or that third bar, but instead into a connecting bar that appears when you're working single crochet in the round. So I will explain where that little bar is to work into when we get to demonstrating this actual cord. But first up, we're going to be working just the standard single crochet rounds with the right side of the work facing out. Okay, so to begin each of our cords, we are going to be working in unjoined spiral rounds of single crochet. I like to begin all of my uh, round projects working in the round with a magic loop instead of a chain loop, which some people may use. A chain loop tends to um, have a hole in the middle of the work, no matter how many stitches you put into it. And the magic loop is really lovely because you can pull on the tail and really cinch up and tighten that first round. So you're left with no gap in the middle and it makes just a really beautiful solid foundation. Uh, so to work the magic loop, I've seen so many videos of people demonstrating this. And for me, it just overcomplicates it so much and I can't even actually understand what they're doing with all this wrapping around the hand and twisting things around. A magic loop is so, so simple to, to use and really all you're doing is crisscrossing one hand over the other. I'm gonna crisscross these two yarns, that's it. You want the tail part coming out the bottom of that crisscross and you want your working yarn overlapping over the top. That's it. That's a magic loop. <laughs> so I hold the tail with my right hand, I'm right-handed, um, to kind of stabilize it. And I'm grasping, grasping uh, the loop itself with my middle finger and thumb here. And I'm just going to insert my hook in here and drop a loop. And really that is, that's the magic loop. It's this circle right here. Since we're working single crochet, I'm going to chain one to begin. So I just want to point this out again. So this is your magic loop. All of your stitches are going to go into here. So no matter what pattern you're starting, you will begin with just drawing up that loop. If you're starting a single crochet project like we are here, you'll do that chain one. If it was a double crochet or half double crochet, you may chain two or three. Um, but for this project, just chain one. And once we've worked all of our stitches into that magic loop, we're just going to pull on this tail and it's going to cinch it up really, really nicely. So I like to kind of expand it a little bit and hold on to it with my left hand with these two fingers here to kind of give it a little bit of space. It's going to be much easier to work my stitches into. And I'm going to be working this first round very, very loosely so that you can really see uh, the parts of the stitch and they're not going to be too tight. And I would recommend you doing that too for your first sample if you want to try this before you actually dive into a project because it's just going to be much easier to see where you're going to put your hook. So we're going to work six single crochets into this center magic loop. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Tug that out a little bit so I can show you. So there's our six crochet, single crochet stitches in our magic loop. And as I said, if you tug on this tail, it's just going to, like a drawstring, pull that together so, so nicely. You'll see there's no hole in the center of that spiral. And because we're going to be working um, in spiral unjoined rounds, we're not going to we're not going to um, slip stitch to that first stitch because we're just going to keep working around. We don't need to join. 
And I just wanted to point out that sometimes when I begin a, um, a little magic loop project like this, it's really sometimes tricky for me to see where that first stitch is. So I just wanted to show you a little trick that I use, which is just to count backwards. So you'll see this is the first stitch. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's where we're going to insert our hook. Sometimes it's a little tricky to distinguish between the first chain one and that first stitch. Um, so I like to count backwards just to confirm where I'm going to be inserting my hook for that first round. Now with this first cord, we are going to be working with the front of the fabric facing us. So I'm just going to take that tail end of the magic loop and pull it to the front of the work so it doesn't get stuck in the middle of the two. Um, and we are going to begin working in spiral unjoined rounds all the way around over and over again. So this is my first stitch. I'm going to insert my hook under both legs of the stitch. These are normal single crochet stitches. And we're going to work that first stitch. And we're just going to keep going around, working single crochets in the round. Now, because we are not increasing as we would if we were working a flat circle, this is going to start to pull in on itself because it's not working flat. We're not expanding it. So as we're going around and around, it's tightening up and it's going to start to pull in on itself. You'll notice that it has a tendency to want to go inside, but because we're going to be working with the front of the work facing us, you want to kind of push that out so the front of the work is on the outside and it'll get much easier as we go along. It's always a little tricky when you're beginning because it's kind of tricky to see where the stitches are and everything. That's why I really wanted to go over the anatomy of the stitch so you can understand where you're going to be placing your hook with each of these cords. So we are just going in spiral rounds all the way around. And with this one, I kind of like to use it in the beginning few rounds here, almost like a little thimble with my middle finger here tucked inside just to hold that fabric really nice and steady. So there's really no counting involved as long as you don't skip a stitch, as long as you know where to put your hook into each of these stitches. They're pretty easy to recognize. This is definitely, I would, I would say, the most beginner-friendly cord because it's really similar to working just regular single crochet in the round. It's easy to identify where you're putting your hook. And so if you are a beginner and you're nervous to try the other ones, go ahead and give this a shot. Get used to the motions, get used to um, understanding with the different parts of the stitch, and eventually the other ones will become easy as well. So you'll just keep going around and around. And you can see all of the stitches are nicely next to each other. These are forming straighter rounds um, because we're going into the tops of the stitches. So I'm just going to pull out the little sample here of this one. Eventually, this is much more stretched out because after I finished this little sample, I did pull on it, which you can see as I do this, it looks much more like that little sample. So this is a little bit stretchy, like I said, because um, there's some space in between those stitches. I am working this really loosely to be able to show you um, all the different parts a little bit easier. But if we were to continue on, it would look just like this one. So that is working single crochet on joined rounds into the tops of the stitches as normal with the front of the work facing out. next sample crochet cord we'll be making is this one, which is single crochet in the round, unjoined rounds, working with the back of the work facing you into the back loop of the stitch only. Once again, this begins with a magic loop with six single crochets into the magic loop. So again, I'm just going to crisscross this, grab a hold with these two fingers, hold the tail with my right hand, 
and draw up a loop. That's how all magic loops begin. Because we're working single crochet, there's gonna be a chain one. Then I will work the six single crochets into this loop. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Again, I'm working pretty loosely so that it's easy to see the parts of the stitch. I'm gonna tighten up that tail. And now, since we're gonna be working with the back of the work facing us, I'm gonna keep that tail tucked underneath so that it comes out the bottom of the work. And again, um, as I demonstrated with the last cord, I'm gonna count back my stitches so I know where to put that first one. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the first stitch. So like I said, we're gonna be working into the back loop only. So I'm only, you can see these are the two Vs of that stitch. I'm only going to insert my hook into that back loop. And because we are working unjoined rounds, there's no need to slip stitch to that first stitch. You're just gonna dive right in and single crochet in the round into that back loop only. And just like with the other cord that we just did, uh, it has a tendency as you're working in the round because you're not expanding to make a flat circle, it's gonna pull in on itself to create that tube. Now, because we're working from the back part of the work with the, uh, with the previous one, we flipped this in, we flipped it right side out. We don't need to do that this time. We're just gonna let this curl in on itself and continue to go in the round. all the way around. Back loop only. The stitches kind of fold in a little bit, like I said, so it's kind of hard to tell um, where they are. So I just want to pause for a second and show you. This is our next stitch. These are both legs of a stitch. This is the back loop only. And then moving around, this is that next stitch. This is the back loop only. So just like with the other one, you're just gonna keep going around and around. But we're gonna be working into that back loop only. And like I said before as well, it is a little tricky with these first rounds, but as you get going, it becomes so much simpler. When you've got like, I don't know, four inches of this and there's more fabric to hold on to as well with your left hand, it just becomes much more kind of, um, you know, like muscle memory and you really recognize where those stitches are and it's much easier to do. But these first rounds can be a little bit difficult. Okay, so there you have the back loop only. This is super duper stretchy because you're only pulling up on that one loop. There's not a lot of foundation um, where you're inserting your hook and so it's gonna have a ton of stretch. Um, so this is this one, again, this is a longer sample that I've, I've stretched out to show you really how the stitches will look, but as you can see, it really stretches a lot, this one. There you have the single crochet in the round with the wrong side facing into the back loop only. So this next one is my favorite and I'm gonna be linking a pattern um, that utilizes this cord in the description below. Um, this one is worked in the round, unjoined single crochet rounds, just as with spiral rounds, just as the last two. But with this one, you're gonna be working into that back bump of the stitch, that third 
bump, that's third bar, that third loop, not the top of the stitch. So like I said in the beginning, um, that little bar slash loop is kind of tricky to get your hook into. So this one is a little bit more difficult. Again, once you get started and you've got this much cord going, it's super easy to recognize where that bump is, but the first few rounds can definitely be a little confusing. So we're gonna go slow. I'm gonna try to explain this as best as I can. And I would say, you know, just keep practicing. And if your first few rounds look a little wonky, as you go on, it'll probably get cleaner. Um, and it's definitely good to do, like I said, a little sample before you dive into a big project using this. So just like the other two, we're gonna begin with that magic loop with six single crochet stitches. So again, magic loop, super simple. You just crisscross the yarn like so. We are going to insert the hook and draw up a loop. And we're gonna chain one for single crochet. Then we're gonna work the six single crochets into that magic loop. So I like to put my fingers in the loop like this to stabilize it and hold on to the tail with my right hand. So I'm gonna work six loose single crochets in here because I really want you to be able to see where this bar is, this third loop, and it's much easier when your stitches are loose. And it's much easier to get the hook into it because it is such a tight loop. You wanna work this kind of loosely. So that's two three, four, five, and six. So then we're going to pull on that tail to close the magic loop. I'm gonna hold the tail underneath. For this one, we're gonna be working from the back of the work as well. It's much easier, probably impossible to access that third loop if you were working from the front of the fabric with this few stitches. So I'm gonna count back to know exactly which stitch to begin with. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is my first stitch right here. These are the front two legs of the stitch here, these little Vs. On the back of the work, you will see I'm gonna pull this out just to show you. First, let's let's turn this totally over. So you can see where these, um, these third loop, these third bar are. So working backwards here, you can see this is one, two, three, four, five, and six. So those are the six bumps or bars or loops that we're going to be working into with this first round and all subsequent rounds. So as we turn our work over, you want to tilt it towards you to access that first little bar. Now the first one might be kind of tricky to get your hook into. Okay, we're gonna work a single crochet into that. Moving right along, they do start to kind of pop up. So we've got the front Vs of this stitch here, and as we tilt it forward, you see that third loop here. So we're gonna insert our hook there I only got part of the yarn. There we go. So this is stitch number two. Again, I'm working really loosely because it makes it much easier to see and access these loops. We've got the front of the work. We tilt it forward. Here is that third loop for the third stitch. And now I got too much yarn on my hook. See, it's wonky even for me, okay. You're going to single crochet into that. Then this is our next stitch. You see the V's there on the front. As you tilt it forward, there's that bar again, that third bar. And you're just gonna do this all the way around. Here's the next one. And you can see the fabric again is starting to curl in on itself. That's what we want. That's forming the cord. Our next stitch, you see these are the two V's. 
tilt it forward, and there is that third bar. As you get going, this gets much easier, especially if you work a sample first, really, really loose like this. Now, this one looks a little tighter for some reason. I'm not working super consistently, I guess. Insert your hook under there. See how difficult it can be to get into that third loop, which is what gives this chord its structure because that, that loop is very tight. It is kind of difficult to access. And so, um, you know, that's gonna, that's gonna give the chord lots and lots of structure because it's a tighter chord. These first few rounds are also a little bit slower. I remember when I first started this thinking it was going to take absolutely forever to finish a chord with the length that I needed. But as you get going and you have more fabric to hold on to with your left hand, it definitely gets speedier. So, yep, you just keep going around and around and spiral unjoined rounds. No need to count or mark the end of the round because what we're looking for here is just to work up to a certain length. So it doesn't matter how many rounds you work, it's all about just the length in inches or centimeters. One more here. Let's have a look. So you can see this cord is really, really pretty. It's very consistent on the outside. Um, and as we were, as we work more and more, uh, it'll begin to look like this. And you'll see this is a little bit thinner, partially because I've really stretched this out to be able to show you the stitches. Also, because I did work this a little bit tighter, um, I purposefully worked this one really loose to be able to show you exactly where that bar is that you want to work into. Um, yeah, so this one is nice and sturdy. It's definitely not as stretchy as the other ones. As I said, this is one of my faves. A um, little bit tricky to get started, but really produces a nice, beautiful, strong cord. For our final crochet cord, we're gonna be making this spiral cord. Now, this one is a little bit different than the others because it has this spiraling effect. All of the other ones, you can see the stitches kind of line up on top of each other. But with this guy, they are spiraling around and that is due to where we will be inserting our hook to make our single crochets. I can untwist this and you can see how the stitches do line up, but the nature of it makes it twist naturally. So this cord is much fatter than the others as well, just to, to show you this that third one again. This is much, much bigger than this one. And this one has more structure on the interior as well because it was pushing all of the tops of the stitches inside the cord itself when we were working that third loop. So this one doesn't have as much air in the center, whereas this one, has lots of air, it's really, really squishy, it's basically hollow on the inside, and it makes it very stretchy as well. So if you were gonna use this one for a strap of something like a bag or a purse, um, I'd probably recommend either crocheting over a cord or inserting a cord, like a nylon cord or a rope or something like that, into the interior of this, because otherwise it's just gonna be super, super stretchy and, and having a cord on the inside will give it more structure. And because this is so hollow and there's not lots of space on the inside, it would be easy to insert something like that into it. So the way this one begins is the exact same as the other three. Once again, we're gonna start with a magic loop. So you're just gonna crisscross your yarn like this, 
that's your magic loop. You insert your hook and you draw up a loop. There you have that magic loop or that magic circle. We are going to chain one because we're working single crochets. And with this one especially, I know I said all the others to work very loosely. This one you want to work super, super loosely uh, for your first few rounds or the first time you're trying this because it's really difficult to understand where this loop is. Um, once you get started, it, it is much easier after you're about five or six rounds in because it's really easy to see and it kind of pops out. But for the first few rounds, it's pretty tricky. So work extra, extra loose on this one. So we're gonna do six single crochets into this magic loop. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. And you're gonna tug on the tail of the magic loop to close it. And with this one, with this kind of cord, we do need to do one foundation round before we begin the round that we'll repeat to create the cord itself. And this first round, we're gonna be working into the back loop only of each stitch around. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six stitches. So again, no need to join or slip stitch into this. We're just gonna dive right into the first round because these are spiral unjoined rounds. So I'm gonna work into the back loop of that first stitch and do a single crochet. I'll do that into each stitch around. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that is your foundation round for this cord. Now take a deep breath and we'll get into the next round. So with our little swatch sample of flat single crochet that I showed you in the beginning of the video, I did not explain where the loop for this cord is, the loop that we'll be working into. Um, I think it's a little bit easier to see and understand uh, when you're looking at crochet in the round versus flat. So I didn't explain it at the top, but now we are going to dive in. So in our first cord, we worked under both legs of the top of the stitch. Then in the second cord and in our first foundation round of this cord, we worked into the back loop of the stitch only. For our third Cord, we worked into this third bar or third loop in the back of the work and for this one we're going to be working into the bar that connects each stitch between them. So what this loop actually is is the left leg of the back of the stitch. Remember in the beginning when I explained that the front and the back of the stitch has two legs, two little parallel vertical legs. When the stitches are connected this this little leg to the left curves over and becomes part of the next stitch. So we're gonna be working into that bar. So here's the first one. On the next stitch, you can see it's right to the left of that third bar, right? Because it's these two vertical legs, but it's the one that curves over to the next stitch. So you've got your little third bar here, your two legs, this is the one that's curving over to the next stitch, so that is the loop we're going into. So let's get started. It is much, much, much easier to see as you work more rounds. These first ones are definitely a little tricky, so if you get frustrated, take a deep breath, start over. Um, it was really hard for me to understand this when I was first beginning as well. And like I said, work extra loose for the first few rounds so you can really see where that loop is. So um, this is the third loop of the stitch that I just worked. And then this, you can see those two vertical legs. This one to the left is the one that curves over and joins the next stitch in the round. So I'm gonna insert my hook into that little loop, connecting loop, and do a single crochet. Okay, now 
this next stitch, open this up a little bit. This is the third bar. These are the two legs and the one, the leg that's to the left, which is the connecting one, is where we're going to insert our hook. Do a single crochet, okay? This is the third bar of this next stitch. These are the two vertical legs I'm going to insert my hook into the left one, which is, again, the connecting bar, connecting loop to the next stitch, and single crochet. Once again, this is the third bar, one leg, the second leg is curving over. That's where we're inserting to do our single crochet. You can always find it by finding that third bar first then the two legs and the one that's the left one is where we insert our hook to make our single crochet. Third bar, right leg, left leg, and we're going to single crochet in there. Here's the third bar, here's the right leg, here's that left leg, see it curving over? and a single crochet. So I went ahead and worked a few more rounds of the spiral cord because I think it's a little bit easier to identify where the stitches that you're going into are when you have gotten a few more rounds in. So I just wanted to point out as we're going around, the stitches, I just went into this one, they start to pop out a little bit more. It's these little under like smiley guys. They're the little curved ones. And once I've gotten to this point, I kind of like to hold the work a little bit sideways. It's just easier to see where these are and hold the cord in this way. You can see they definitely pop up and show themselves a little bit easier once you have several rounds in. And you'll be really used to identifying where they are and being able to access them. It gets easier as you go. So this is the more tubular spiral um, crochet cord worked into that connecting bar on the back of the work. So there you have all four of the different kinds of crochet cord that you can use in any project that utilizes a drawstring or a strap or a belt or anything where you need a long cord. Again, just to go over them real briefly, this is the single crochet in the round with the front of the work facing going under both the front and the back loop of the stitch. This is single crochet in the round working with the wrong side of the work facing going only under the back loop. This is the sturdiest cord, which is worked into that third loop just behind the top two Vs of the stitch. And this is that spiral cord that's nice and airy and bouncy um, that is worked into the connecting loop or the connecting bar between two stitches. I hope you enjoyed the video.